Breaking news, Penn State football has landed another commitment for the 2025 class. Signing day is not yet, but we're almost there. Uh, welcome back to another edition of the Penn State 365 podcast. I'm your host, Richie O'Leary, joined as always when we're talking Penn State football, Penn State football recruiting, and uh, anything with the Nittany Lions. Uh, my co-host and Happy Valley Insider's very own, Dylan Callahan Crawley. Dylan, like I just said, Penn State just added a 2025 commit, well, a flip, flip miss. It's almost flip miss, kind of flip miss. Um, flipped Brian Kordovich, tight end from Villa Angela St. Joseph High School in Cleveland, Ohio, formerly committed to Purdue. How did this one kind of come about, and uh, what is Penn State getting in him? Yeah, I mean, this is a this is a <clears throat> tight end that we've been tracking here at Half Valley Inside for a while. Kind of, you know, I think we first mentioned him sometime in the summer there when he came and camp for Penn State, put together quality performances that he was a, a name to kind of, you know, tuck behind the ear and just kind of remember that he's he's there if Penn State uh, were to come back around later in the cycle and with you know the Andrew Olish recruitment going uh, well at, at, what one day before the early signing period he's <laughs> announcing a decision on Friday yeah. so just a couple days ago on that nobody really knows where he's going to ultimately go um, but Penn State with Kordovich has been kind of keeping their tabs on him, watching how he's developed over his senior season. And mm-hmm. as this uh, fall has progressed, they uh, slowly ramped up uh, the pace in which they were, you know, keeping in contact with him, uh, the heat they were applying on him. Uh, he was obviously committed to Purdue for quite a while there since June. Uh, obviously, the Boilermaker season did not go to plan. Ryan Walters gets fired Sunday. Uh, he... I believe decommitted on Sunday night um, from the board makers or Monday. Uh, either way, Penn State uh, hosted him on an official visit over the weekend. Uh, and for a while, we were saying on our board that, you know, if he gets a Penn State offer, this is going to be one to watch out for for Penn State. It seemed like a very easy flip from that regard. It was just a matter of was he going to receive an offer? And if so, when that offer was going to come, and it came uh, here in the last few days. Uh, and he made a decision to become an Indy line, which uh, is, a, is a nice pickup here late in the cycle for Penn State. Athletic kid who tested really well uh, for Penn State when he was on campus. Um, offer sheet obviously isn't going to be one right now that I think really, you know, moves the needle for a lot of people. But uh, I think Penn State has a really nice late cycle still, still here. And, you know, you consider what the Indy lines have done at the tight end position under James Franklin in his, in his entire tenure and it's a position where um, I, I think if you're a Penn State fan, you just trust the staff's evaluation of what uh, they see in tight ends and what they like and uh, their ability to recruit those tight ends because uh, as I posted uh, earlier today on X, uh, the run that they have been on in the James Franklin era is uh, quite an insane run, all things considered. Um, I'm not sure there's many programs that match it uh, Jesse James, Mike Gazicki, Pat Fryermuth, Brian Strange, Theo Johnson, Tyler Warren. At one point or another, all those tight ends were on the roster. There was always at least a year of overlap, overlap between all those uh, tight ends. So, was that six of those guys? That doesn't mention. Uh, that's not to mention guys like Kyle Carter and Nick Bowers, who also had time in the NFL. So, I mean, Penn State is recruits and develops tight ends as good as anybody. Uh, so I think Penn State has a really nice piece here in Kordovich uh, to pair with Matt Henderson, uh, and we'll see uh, what happens with Olish here as well. Yeah, um, really, I mean, kind of quietly becoming tight end you, let's be honest. But uh, yeah, I shouldn't even say quietly because these are all pretty big names, but Tyler Warren expected to be the next one among that bunch. Um, Brian Kordovich, looking at his tape now, plays a lot of receiver for his high school team. Um, really good red zone threat, tall, vertical guy. More of a playmaker than a blocker, so he'll probably have to learn the blocking aspect of everything. Or Which, at of least... course, at Penn State is big, uh, as James yeah. Franklin has uh, been sure to point out uh, with the development of Tyler Warren and uh, how good of a tight end he is. Uh, mm-hmm. He's pointed out multiple times that you know at Penn State they uh, still still believe their tight end should be blockers. Yeah, on, on top of it all, I mean, Penn State runs a shit ton of 12 personnel sets. Let's be honest. Like, they're going to run a lot of two tight end sets. Um, so something to definitely keep an eye on. Uh, really good get. Now, you mentioned it before, Andrew Olish, Michigan commit, Pennsylvania guy. 
still technically out there, still committed to Michigan for now. Oregon's pushing, Penn State's pushing. What's the latest here? I know you just said he's committing Friday, or, well, making his final decision Friday. I always find it weird when kids do that despite being committed somewhere. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, he's going to wait it out till Friday because it is a technically a three-day cycle. Now, speaking of the number three, would Penn State take three tight ends this cycle? Uh, I think they would absolutely take, uh, you know, uh, the two they have plus Olish. Technically, depending on who you ask, they technically already have three tight ends with Brady mm-hmm. O'Hara committed. Well, yeah. we, we project O'Hara to be an offensive lineman long-term, and we have an, an offensive lineman on rivals right now. Um, but... Would they take uh, oh uh, I mean Olish uh, yes they would take Olish if Olish still wanted to commit. Does this affect Olish's decision? It'll be interesting because Olish uh, you know Oregon already has one tight end commitment I believe in their 2025 class. Uh, they're also pushing for Lincoln Cure who is one of Penn State's top tight end targets in this class earlier in the cycle. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the Ducks could land both or one of those two this week. Um, and then Michigan he's are obviously been committed there for quite a while. Wolverines have a ton of momentum on the recruiting trail right now. I think this one could really go any way of these three programs. If I had to guess, it's probably going to be Penn State or Oregon, just my gut feeling. But, I mean, Penn State or Michigan, uh, not Penn okay. State or yeah. uh, Penn State or Michigan, um, if I had a guess right now. Uh, and then furthermore, I, I see right now, I think it, it would be hard to see him not sign with Michigan right now. Just because mm-hmm. Wolverines do have a ton of momentum on the recruiting trail, no kidding, and uh, obviously have a ton of recruitment off the field now with the win over Ohio State, uh, and then of course uh, picked up Bryce Underwood last week, which of course mm-hmm. doesn't help that, uh, which doesn't hurt at all when it comes to a guy like Olish, uh, when he, a guy like Underwood's going to be throwing you the ball uh, for the next three to four years. So uh, I, I would probably, if I had to make a you know. I like got decision right now. So uh, he sticks with Michigan, but I, I definitely think Penn State's very much in this one and has a chance to flip him on Friday. Uh, but uh, he's keeping everything very close to the chest right now. And mm-hmm. uh, it, anybody's guess is as good as mine when it comes to where he's signed out on Friday. 26 commitments currently, as of right now. Obviously, could be 27 with Oldish. Um, do you see anything surprising happening tomorrow for Penn State? It seems like I don't want to jinx it. I'm gonna. I might jinx it though. It, it seems like it might be a quiet Wednesday. Um, I think if it's not a quiet Wednesday, it's probably bad news for Penn State right now. Mm-hmm. Um, we know that Bryce Baker, the four-star top one quarterback, committed to UNC currently, is holding off on his uh decision until at least next week. Mm-hmm. Um. We know Olish is waiting until Friday, so uh, and I don't think there's anybody out there that you know quietly has a Penn State offer that uh, would be committing on uh, Wednesday either. So I think overall, uh, barring some major surprise that's really gone on the radar, that it's going to be a very quiet Wednesday, and that's not a bad thing for Penn State. Very good class here. They'll I expect them to sign all 26 uh, kids on Wednesday, and then we'll see if they can add. Uh, somebody like an Olish or or a Bryce Baker here uh, in the next uh, couple of days afterwards. Yeah, definitely going to be interesting to see uh, how that one plays out. We know Bryce Baker's hearing from LSU, took a visit to Penn State, still currently committed to UNC. Sounds like he's still waiting to see what UNC does with their head coaching spot. Tons of rumors out there. We've heard yeah. Arthur Smith. Uh, who else? There's someone else. I heard BJ Fleck on the one Twitter. And, and it does seem like um, North Carolina – the way I read it, at least, is is it seems like he really wants to give North Carolina every chance here to, um, you know, make this hire, see what, you know, b- way that program is going to go in the future. I think he really mm-hmm. likes the program beyond just you know that the fact that Mac Brown was there, the fact that coaching staff was there. I think he, you know, likes the university, likes, um. Travel Hill and everything that comes with being in North Carolina. So yeah. I, I think he's going to get the Tallers every opportunity here. But uh, at some point or another, he has to make a decision. And Penn State, I think, put them and themselves in a really good spot um, this past week. And if he decides to not go with North Carolina, and uh, I think Penn State would be uh, in a better spot than LSU where he has not visited and he's not going to get the opportunity to visit before uh, making a decision. 
because uh, the latest he can make decision with him in Rome early is January. Uh, mm-hmm. Theoretically, he can't just show up on campus somewhere in January and sign his papers then, and that's where he's going. Um, thinking back to it, I think that's what Najee Harris did with Michigan and Alabama way back, was just yeah. kind of show up on a campus, and that's where he was going to go. Um, I don't <laughs> think it's going to go that far with Baker, but, uh, yeah, we'll see when Baker makes a decision here this month. Uh, but, yeah, if, he doesn't, if it's not going to be North Carolina, Penn State definitely seems like uh, the best uh, – Best uh, option, second option. Op- uh, option or fit isn't the right word, but they're in a very good spot. I should, yeah, is the way to say it uh, for him uh, right now. All right, cool. Uh, that's really all we got. A little bit of a shorter episode on uh, mostly on Kordovich and his commitment. Um, signing days tomorrow. We'll have another podcast out on that, breaking down the class, breaking down some of our favorites on, in this class, some of our questionable moves in this class because I, I know I have a couple. Um, right now it's number 16 ranked recruiting class like I said before or like Dylan said before with Bryce Baker top 100 kid with Andrew Ola should obviously change some things but um, for me and Dylan that's another episode of the Penn State 365 podcast signing off